What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're talking about AMD versus Intel versus Nvidia versus AMD on the GPU side. Um, and we're gonna talk about how these two matchups are gonna affect gaming laptops. Now, I've got a lot of CES content planned. I'm gonna talk about all the different laptops that have been released. That said, if you're looking for a quick cheat sheet guide to which laptop to buy, I do have a spreadsheet linked in the video description down below that lists all of the laptops that I can find at major retailers, and I've even rated them on my estimated price to performance ratio, if you will, uh, in my deal rating. Now, I'll be updating that list as more laptops are announced and released. There's gonna be a ton of laptops in that list, but I have made it easy by bolding the laptops that I think are the very best, but there's still, there's a lot of great options in there. Anything above like an eight out of 10 is a really good deal in my book. Now, I also gotta mention, I'm doing a giveaway of an Asus ROG Strix 17, Asus's new flagship gaming laptop. This has an RTX 3070 in it. I believe it's a max performance. And to top it off, it's got an eight core AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX overclockable processor. Now I'll be doing the giveaway on a live stream on January 31st at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So if you don't wanna miss out, either mark your calendars or subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Bonus perk, if you do decide to subscribe, I'll be making a lot of CES content and I'll be even be posting a review of that laptop in particular, which I think is arguably one of the most attractive laptops out of all of the laptops that have been announced so far at CES. Like, it sold out in just a couple hours across all of the websites that I could find. So, anyway, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely insane laptop. I'm sure whoever gets it will absolutely love it. All right, so what is the big news from CES? Let's start with AMD. AMD is so juicy, okay? Uh, AMD, we've got a bunch of different CPUs that have been launched. We got the Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7 undervolted or U uh, series, the Ryzen 5 U and the Ryzen 3 U. All of the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 processors have eight cores, 16 threads, while the Ryzen 5 have six cores, 12 threads, and the Ryzen 3 has four cores, eight threads. Now, the most important CPUs are gonna be the Ryzen 7 5800H. This is gonna be your like baseline, really solid processor in the Ryzen laptop this year. Probably their most common one. The other one that's gonna be super common in the higher end, Gaming laptops is gonna be the Ryzen 9 5900HX. Now when it says HS, it means that it is actually slightly underperforming CPU compared to the H. The H is a 45 watt TDP compared to 35 watts of the HS, and then the H X is the overclockable version. So you can take that TDP above 45 watts and just get extended performance, all depending on the thermal limits of the laptop that you have. So the thicker the laptop, the better the cooling solution of the laptop, the more performance you're gonna get out of an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX. Like you get a laptop cooling pad, you crank your AC down to 50 degrees and put on a winter jacket, you're gonna be able to overclock that sucker. I would love it if these processes could push at least 4.5 gigahertz across all cores in a fairly thin and light body like the Strix 17. Now AMD did release some benchmarks during their keynote. We saw it match up against the i9-10980HK, which is Intel's current and even after CES, their top eight core chip for a laptop. And AMD claims that the Ryzen 9 beats out the i9 by 13% in single threaded performance in Cinebench R20 and 35% performance in multi-threaded work in Passmark and beats it by 19% in the Firestrike Physics benchmark. Overall, those benchmarks are incredibly promising, but at the same time, both the i9 and the 5900HX are overclockable CPUs and depending on which chassis you get those CPUs in, you can have drastically different levels of performance. Like if you get the i9 Intel in like the Aereo 15, which is like this four pound laptop with very minimal heat sinks, it's gonna throttle a lot. But if you get the i9 and a GT75 Titan, that sucker will overclock like crazy. So I just really don't like AMD's uh, benchmarking method here because we don't know which laptops these were tested in. So I would take these numbers with a huge grain of salt. And then they also released both the single and multi-threaded R20 score for the 5980HS. 
And keep in mind that the HS processor is the lower watt version, so we should expect quite a bit more performance from the H and HX versions of the processor. In AMD's keynote, they mentioned they'll be releasing 150 Ryzen-based laptops this year. That's a lot. And the last bit of really important information is that AMD will, in fact, they've confirmed they will be launching RDNA 2 GPUs sometime in the first half of 2021. We're on track to launch the first notebooks with RDNA 2 in the first half of the year with our partners. What that tells me is that they'll probably announce April or May and then release end of May, June, most likely. I mean, that's the most likely. Maybe even announce June, release June. We don't know. That's like worst case scenario if it's in the first half of 2021. Either way, it's huge that AMD has announced these intentions because that does confirm that Nvidia is going to be pressured in marking down their GPU prices so that uh, we get a better deal on laptops. And that is huge. I mean, look at some of these laptops that we've got listed here. We've got overclockable CPUs with RTX 30, 3070s and it's only $1,800. We get some RTX 3060s for only $999 from the MSI, that GF65. That thing's gonna sell out so fast. That thing is more powerful than an RTX 2080 Super, according to Nvidia, which we'll get to here in a second. And it's only $1,000, which it's half the price, half the price of an RTX 2080 Super. If you just bought an RTX 2080 Super laptop for $3,000 yesterday, and now you see that you could get an RTX 3060, which has more performance for only $1,000, that's insane. Speaking of Nvidia, let's move on to them. Now, one thing that I wanna really point out, because this is something that I think a lot of people could take advantage of, is GeForce Now game streaming. Uh, Nvidia now offers 800 titles, and you can stream them based on your own original game library from Steam, Origin, Ubisoft. Now, GeForce Now utilizes Nvidia's own game servers to stream the game to you, so you don't even have to have a GeForce or RTX laptop. Trying out the service is free. You can do one hour sessions. I'm not sure if that's daily or monthly, but uh, $25 will get you a premium unlimited subscription for six months. So, I mean, you're talking like $4 a month approximately. But the downside to this is you will need a fast, low latency internet connection to make this work well. I did try Google Stadia, which is very, very similar to this, uh, and it did not even work well when I was outside of the room where my main Wi-Fi and router were located. So depending on your Wi-Fi and router setup, you may be pretty limited to where you could play games in your house, but again, you can do it on a budget, so that's pretty freaking awesome. Moving on to RTX laptops. First of all, the Ampere generation is here for laptops. This is the second gen RTX. We got third gen Max-Q. Uh, now we have two times more power efficiency. I'm pretty sure they're getting this number from for every watt used in the laptop, you get two frames compared to before. I think that's what they're trying to say here. So if you have a 90 watt and a 90 watt from one generation to the next, you're getting a two times power efficiency boost. I don't think that's gonna be accurate though, but we'll see. I can't wait to find out when I get my hands on one. Um, now with the RTX 3000 series, we're getting Dynamic Boost 2.0. This utilizes AI to shift power between the GPU, CPU, and now also the GPU memory. We'll just have to get it in hand to see how well this works or if it's even a noticeable difference at all. It's probably gonna just be something that runs in the background and you never have to think about. Nvidia also released something called Whisper Mode 2.0. The idea of Whisper Mode is that you set a target frame rate in whatever game you're playing. Let's say that the laptop can hit 100 frames per second in Far Cry 5, but you only need to use like 50 or 60 frames per second for it to be a very smooth gameplay experience. Well, if you use Whisper Sync mode, you can reduce the load on the GPU and CPU so the fans don't have to work as hard, providing a much quieter gaming environment. Most manufacturers utilize like three or four power profiles for like silent, uh, default, turbo and like overclocked mode. I don't know if whisper mode is something that a lot of people are gonna take advantage of because most people do that kind of thing through the manufacturer software anyway, but we'll have to see. Maybe it'll be worth using. The last major feature they've added to the 3000 series mobile GPUs is a resizable bar. Uh, this increases CPU bandwidth access to GPU memory, allowing access to all of GPU memory at once. This may not matter for mini games, but it could give some games a boost. I don't know enough about this yet 
to be able to say more. I'm actually, I wish I could be there and talk to them and ask some questions about it. On to the GPU announcements. We got the RTX 3060. This is supposed to be 30% faster than a PlayStation 5 and faster than the RTX 2080 Super from the entire last generation. So basically that sets the playing field that even the lowest new GPU is faster than the fastest GPU of the previous generation. RTX 3060 laptops will start at $999, and there are in fact RTX 3060 laptops for sale right now on my spreadsheet. You can pre-order them. I don't think they're sold out yet, but they might be by the time this video goes live. Okay, on to the RTX 3070. Well, this is supposed to be 50% faster than the RTX 2070. It's supposed to be able to do 90 frames per second on ultra 1440p <laughs> and it's supposed to start at 12.99 now there have not been any laptops that i've seen so far with an rtx 3070 for 12.99 i bet you there will be some somewhere in the future some super budget version of some like hp omen or something like that the cheapest rtx 3070 that i've seen so far is the hp omen 15 uh, at Best Buy, that's that's gonna be a really good deal if you can get it, but right now uh, it's sold out. RTX 3080, this is gonna be the fastest laptop GPU out, at least until RDNA 2 comes out. Maybe RDNA 2 GPUs will be a little bit faster, we'll have to see. Now Nvidia says these should be priced starting at 1999, which I kind of didn't believe, but 1999 is in fact true because I saw an Aorus 15 with an RTX 3080 Max-Q, which is just an insane deal. I think it had 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD as well, an eight core Intel CPU and a 240 Hertz full HD freaking screen. That is just an insane deal. Like that's not just like a bare bones RTX 3080. You get an extra large SSD and you get 32 gigs of RAM, which is like a double bonus. And on top of that, it's priced so competitively. Like, does this mean that if you were to get like more of a bare bones RTX 3080, you might be able to even get one for like $1,800? I don't know. If you take those couple upgrades off of that Aorus, you get like a $1,800, $1,900 laptop. Maybe that will be the ultimate deal level zone of the new laptops. So we'll have to see. Laptops no longer have the exact same chip as the desktop GPU. This is very important to recognize and I believe the reason for this is that the NVIDIA 3080 desktop card is just too power hungry, too many CUDA cores to be able to run it in like a max Q form factor. So they had to reduce the core count and the overall size of the GPU. But either way, the RTX 3060, 3070, and 3080 are still a massive boost in performance. The last thing NVIDIA mentioned is NVIDIA Studio, which is basically their, their push to integrate performance from the GPU into enhancing uh, the software experience. And I think this is a crucial thing because if you utilize AI and the CUDA cores in the GPUs, you can see massive improvements in performance in things like Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, and it's gonna be crucial for AMD to also be developing this because there are a lot of people that use their laptops, not just for gaming, but also for productivity. So I really hope the RDNA 2 laptops also have this focus of utilizing AI in the software applications and also utilizing the GPU's power to enhance performance like rendering speeds and smoothness of animations and stuff like that. On to Intel, here we go. We're excited to launch the world's best processor for thin and light laptops, our 11th gen Intel Core the world's best <laughs> processor for thin and light laptop. Intel released four new lineups for their processors. The first one is the V Pro, which is a business class CPU with added security measures. I think this is gonna be very important considering uh, we recently got hacked in the United States and we don't like being hacked, so more security is better. Then we have the N series, which is an educational CPU on a budget. Then we got the 11th gen desktop CPU, the i9-11900, K was announced. They've got a bunch of other Rocket Lake CPUs that they're going to release. I think around March was the time frame. Uh, but the i9-11900K is an eight core CPU down from 10 cores. So we're, we're downgrading, but it does feature improved CPU architecture and it claims to do 19% more instructions per cycle. Not sure exactly how all of this is gonna translate into real world performance. So we'll have to actually wait until we get these CPUs in hand before we know the dealio. 
And last but not least, we have the Intel H series Tiger Lake processors. And to sum it up, basically the leaks were correct. We're only getting four core i5 and i7 CPUs in the Tiger Lake lineups right now. They are gonna release six and eight core versions later on. I believe they said that you can expect it to ship at the end of Q1, so maybe we're getting them around the beginning of Q2, so that would be the end of March, early April. Now the big thing about these Tiger Lake CPUs is they feature 10 nanometer super thin architecture Architecture. Intel seems to be focusing not so much on the core nanometer size, but improving the efficiency of the architecture to try to catch up. Overall, what this means is that we're gonna get these new Tiger Lake H CPUs and some of the budget and mid-range gaming laptops for right now. But if you really want a high performance Intel CPU and like a new RTX 3000 GPU, you're gonna have to wait anytime a competitor is releasing their next gen tech and comparing it to their competitor's previous gen tech, in this case, the AMD 4000 series CPUs, you know that they're in a heaping pile of trouble. The only redeeming and quality of these new four core i5 and i7 CPUs is that they have exceptionally good single threaded performance. Then it'll be very competitive with the new AMD CPUs, which will be great for games that need single threaded performance. But for now, it's clear you'll want a eight core CPU, whether it's AMD or Intel, if you care at all about multi-threaded performance. Intel is trying to survive in the market by marketing their CPUs to very specific people like the business people should buy this one and the education people should buy this one and then the people who need high performance desktops should buy this one, laptops should buy this one and they're basically trying to very specialize their lineup and I bet you they will be very successful in the education and business side of things because there's a lot of people in those areas that just don't know better but enthusiasts are certainly disappointed with what's been released as of CES, but they're looking forward to maybe seeing something that's gonna be successful here in a couple months, but it's just, we got doubts because Intel just feels like they're so far behind, but it's not gonna help us at all if AMD just crushes Intel into the ground, which would really suck. We really want competition in the marketplace. So that's what I think about everything that's been announced so far. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm really curious. Don't forget to mark your calendars for that giveaway or subscribe subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. That's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Watch out.